Okay, hello everyone. <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I can see there's a lot of people here. Sound is okay. Uh, hopefully it is. I'm always a bit unsure. I got some technical problems when I started today. Um, and yeah, I guess I guess that's it. We are we're back. Uh, apologies that we didn't do a stream last week. I wasn't here. Uh, I was at work. And um, I guess I guess we today we are going to go with. Um, with uh, nuke this constructions uh, i must say already out of the bat that i am a bit under the weather i think i have like some kind of uh, cold or something starting um and so do i do apologize already in advance if i sneeze or if i cough a bit or if my nose is running a bit i do apologize for that i am a bit under the weather so we most likely are going to do a bit of shorter stream today, if you don't mind, because of that. Um, I've already posted quite a few links on the chat. Um, I posted the, the link um, about the Nuke uh, license that we're getting giveaway today, courtesy of the Foundry, which is the sponsor of this stream. So I can't thank enough for the Foundry for sponsoring it. Uh, I'm not using my Foundry t-shirt today. I am today trying to support Ferrari. I'm a huge Formula One fan and I was so happy that they won uh, two weeks ago. And I can't wait for them to win again in Japan this weekend. So I'm a huge fan of Ferrari. And so I have my Ferrari t-shirt. Um, hopefully, hopefully they win this weekend. Um, I got my Ferrari t-shirt here. <laughs> <laughs> so, lovely for our t-shirt that was given to me by my wife, my lovely wife. Um, so, I already posted the link for the giveaway of the Nukes uh, course. I've also posted the link of the Foundry course. I've also posted the link of my online course that is currently... 50% uh, off, so 60%, uh, sorry. So, if you're interested on my Nuke course uh, currently, it is 60% off, uh, only until Friday. So you only have until tomorrow to take advantage of this promotion. So the link is on the chat. That's the QR code. If you're interested in any of my Nuke courses, they're both 60% off. This is the cheapest that it's ever been. Uh, it's never been so cheap, so go ahead. And if you're interested, it's like a hundred pounds. It's like really cheap, and it has a lot of content. There's a lot of my students on the chat, and you can you know that uh, they can give you some feedback about it. Um, so talking about that, like uh, that's the QR code and the link for my giveaway. So by the end of the stream, we'll have a giveaway about uh, with my Nuke course, as I usually do. Uh, that's the this is the first giveaway we'll have. So you have the link on the chat. It's also the QR code there. And there's a link as well on the description of the YouTube video that you're currently watching as well. Uh, thank you so much for all the wishes of feeling better. Yeah, I'm not sure what's happening. I'm, I'm feeling a bit... I just woke up with the sore throat. Um, and I woke up with a runny nose. The same yesterday. Not entirely sure what happened. Um, I don't usually get sick, but I don't know. I was in Paris last week, so maybe I brought it with me. I um, was visiting Paris yesterday, last week with Anna, and um, and I, I guess that was probably why. Um, okay, so that's the course. You also have the Nuke Indie, which is given away by Foundry every stream. We do these streams every two weeks. Um, and so if you are interested on getting a brand new free one-year Nuke Indie license, just use that QR code or the link. They are always so supportive of my channel. I can't thank them enough for all the the support that they give me on every stream and um, and with that in mind i'm going to just run a commercial from the foundry uh just to to um um you know to g it's really short just because they're the sponsors of my stream so i want to shout out the foundry and also their their amazing educational uh, license uh, capability and also the educational websites that they have so let's uh, look at the trailer and i'll be right back in one minute
Oh, it does work better with sound, doesn't it? <laughs> I do apologize for that. I forgot to turn on the sound, I think. Uh, oh, I don't have any sound. That's weird. Apologies, apologies. It's always a bit of a um, struggle in my computer sometimes. And not entirely sure why the sound is not working on 7. That's weird. Hmm. Okay, let me try another thing here. If this doesn't work, I'll try to fix it during the um, during the break. Yeah, it's not working, is it? Okay, that's fine. I'll play it from... Um, apologies for that. I'm not sure why that didn't play. I'll play it from just the finder. That's fine. Um, I can do it there. That should work. Um, Foundries. Yeah, there you go. No, that works. I'll do that. Uh, apologies for that little little nitpick glitch there. Um, this wouldn't be a Yugo's death stream without a, some kind of issue. <laughs> okay, let me just do it like this way, and this way you can hear it. Okay, I'll be right back. Foundry's Nuke is the industry standard tool for compositing in the film and TV industry. We've produced and curated all the essential resources for learning Nuke and preparing you for the profession, as well as recommendations for other training resources. You'll learn compositing fundamentals, rotoscoping, keying, tracking objects, color management, 3D compositing, and much more. Our objective is to empower artists with all the knowledge they need to push their skills to the next level. Jump in and start learning today. Okay, at least that worked. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there. I do apologize um, that it didn't work the first time. Uh, but yeah, Foundry is the sponsor of this stream. Thank you so much for them. Couldn't do this without them. Adam is asking if it's Charles or Carlos. Adam, it doesn't matter who it is. It's the car that matters, okay? It's the Ferrari. I don't care if it's Charles or Carlos. Uh, Carlos that um, that wins the race as long as it's a Ferrari that wins the race <laughs> you should know by now that it doesn't matter who drives it it's the car that is there that's the important part <laughs> okay and before we jump into Nuke um, just wanted to like shout out one last thing um, and uh, and then we can go on um, so as you know uh, my my lovely wife made an amazing recipe book called green recipes for all i just wanted to shout out if you are interested uh, if you like good food i was very proud to help her with this endeavor i helped a little bit on the design and on the photos it has 50 something recipes um it's like filled with pastas and in desserts and mostly vegan some of them vegetarian you can just take out the cheese and then it's it's vegan so this is a wonderful book with i can vouch for all the recipes they're all really good <laughs> so if you're interested it's available on all amazons it's available on paperback hardcover kindle and you can buy it on every Amazon that exists. So I'll put the link on the screen now. Um, obviously, keep in mind that's the link for the UK. Uh, but if you are not on the UK, you can always uh, get it on any other Amazon. So consider buying the book to support my wife's uh, project and also to support yourself, you know, to get some good food and eat some 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 good food and maybe try something you don't need to be vegan or vegetarian to enjoy this book this book is not about that at all this book is about good food and having a good time making it so if you are considering and if you like to make food or if you have friends that like the good food consider buying the book um i'm very proud of anna of what she achieved here and uh yeah i just wanted to shout out that uh and with that in mind i'm just gonna like put the link on uh, on the chat as well one last time and then we're gonna go into nuke so let's see here so okay cool so um keep coming the questions um thank you so much Chazelle, for being here moderating the stream you don't need to do that i i, I can't thank you enough for you to be here much appreciated but uh, I can see Giselle is here, so thank you so much uh, for being here. 
Um, uh, there's a question that already came up. Was um, a Kolsinski? I can't. I don't know if I can pronounce your name. Kolasinski asks Hugo: Is there any decision you regret in your professional career? Where are your professional dreams? Where do you see yourself in five years? I guess that's that's um, that's a, that's a tough question. I don't know. Like I, I feel like. I feel like like I I wish I could direct more. That's my biggest wish because I've I've directed short films. I've directed a lot of commercials, a lot of game cinematics. But I wish I could direct more short films. I wish I had more time to direct. Especially like I I have a short film. I sh I filmed a shot on 2017 and I still have not managed to finish it because I need. I need some help in 3D and and I need some help in in rendering and lighting and I never really managed to get the 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 budget to get it to work so so it's it's kind of like on I hate is and I'm I, I would love to finish that and I would love to do more short films and maybe try to do a film I would love to do that that's kind of my dream I don't think it will ever happen it's really difficult to do films it's really difficult to even it's it's a lot easier to make commercials and that I've done a lot in my career both commercials and cinematics films is just a different beast you know so I, I think it's not as as simple um you know so that's kind of I get my I, I guess that's my answer <laughs> that I would give you uh, but thank you so much for asking the question uh, that is lovely that you asked that question thank you Okay, so last week, well, two weeks ago, sorry, not last week, uh, two weeks ago, we talked a bit about The Walking Dead. Um, remember, this stream is all about this construction production. So we, I'm opening real projects, real scripts, showing you, if you watch the last stream, you see that I even show you my presentations to my clients. I show you the keynotes. I show you my reviews, my dailies. I'm basically spilling all the beans about how to do a project like this. Um, so <laughs> Studio Divis is asking, Hugo, um, a Matrix 25th anniversary. Well, I mean, I've already done a, a VFX Notes podcast with Ian Files about the Matrix. We did it two years ago. So you can go and watch that. There's a, a visual effects notes podcast just about the Matrix, um, and maybe maybe have a look at that. <laughs> so I'm gonna plug my own podcast here and uh, just um, and just uh, kind of like go there. Uh, let me just uh, go here and then podcasts. I think it's episode. I can't remember now. I need to go and check. It's been a long time, so the Matrix episode was episode 14. Oh my god, two years ago. That is a long time. Um, so I'm just going to like copy the link, link here and share it with you. Um, so let's see here. So yeah, that's the, um, the Matrix VFX Notes podcast. That's the one. Uh, yeah, that's the one. So if you want to check it out, it, it, there it is. There it is in the middle here, just between Eternals and Shang-Chi and Tenet. That's the Matrix. So this was a one hour and a half special episode about the Matrix with me and Ian. And also we also talked about the Matrix demo from Unreal as well that came out two years ago. So I'm not sure I'm going to do a, a stream. Last one was Barbie, and today we're releasing Cocaine Bear. So that's our next episode is Cocaine Bear. Uh, so, yeah, I hope that uh, people enjoy that one. <laughs> and Cocaine Bear is a very strange film. Um, okay, so let's um, remember last time. Th this These streams, like I was explaining, these streams are all about showing, casing real projects. And so this constructing project that I've done in the past. Uh, of course, I can't show all of them. I only show the ones that I've been allowed to show. And so uh, I started with Heroes Arena. That was the first one that I showed on the first streams because this is the fifth stream now. You have a playlist. You can go to the playlist and, and watch them all. So if you go to my channel here, um, if you go to playlists, there is like a disconstruction playlist here. Uh, which is season one, which is the old one, and then you have season two. So season two, we've done five so far, 
and um, and yeah, I guess I guess they all have they all have chapters as well, so you can always like go through the topics that you want, um, so that 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 could help you. But uh, last time we did Heroes Arena, and then we started doing The Walking Dead. Now the next one is going to be the Zeiss Project, which has live action, which is going to be interesting to do that one, I think, because we we haven't done a live action one. But uh, just as a refresher, this is the trailer that that uh, we're disconstructing. It's a game cinematic I did uh, years ago for Fire That Smoke, and I directed this cinematic. And the reason I wanted to showcase this, like I said last week, two weeks ago, is because it's so different and it's so stylized and it's not a common project that you tend to see inside of Nuke. Um, it's just a, a different type of project and I, I thought that it was going to be interesting. But you guys give me feedback. If, you, if you're enjoying these streams, if you enjoy me disconstructing production, let me know if you like me to continue doing this. Uh, as far as I know... I'm not entirely sure, but I, I don't think anyone else on YouTube does this. I don't think anyone else on YouTube showcases real productions. Um, this has to do with the fact that I have a good relationship with my clients and they allowed me to show these things. Um, not everyone, unfortunately, has that kind of... Uh, but, uh, but do let me know um, if you're enjoying these. Uh, I'm planning to continue many years to go because I, I have... I don't know, I have uh, dozens of projects that I can disconstruct. Um, at least 20 projects that I have to disconstruct. So, and a lot of them on live action, like, like the next one. Pretty much everything that is on my website, I can disconstruct on live on the stream, depending maybe a few that I can't. Um, you know, unfortunately, some of them I don't have permission or I don't really have it anymore. I used to, and I don't have it anymore. But if, if I go to my website, like the next one I want to do is the Zeiss project, which has live action. Unfortunately, I can't really do the Adobe ones. I, I, I can't, but I can do Sniper Elite, can do Vermintide, I can do Far Cry. Bjorn, I don't, I haven't checked. Uh, Heroes in we've done, this is the one we're doing. Valkyrie, I need to check. Uh, Mario, I can't do. Um, the crew I can do for sure. Uh, Assassin's Creed, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Homefront, I've done many times, but I can open a few. Uh, Oak Lake is my own project, I can. Uh, Just Cause 3, I can definitely do. This is not good enough, Rival Kingdom, so I'm not doing that one. Um, and then um, uh, uh, Baby Teeth, I can definitely do. H Hummingbird, I can do. Leonard's the Motion, Call of Duty, I can't. BBC God Who Knows, I can do. Adidas, I don't think I can. Sif, I don't think I can. Body Count, I can. And then Smokes, like I can do. Not Nike. Uh, there's a couple. D Love, I can do. I can't. Yeah, if you go a bit lower here, I can't really do much. Um, so most of these are. Or just not gonna. I'm not gonna have permission to to show them, but uh, but you know it is what it is. It's already quite a few that I have to show. I think I have at least fifteen that I can show, and anything that I in the future I show as well, I can do that. Um, okay, so off of this one, I've prepared uh, four shots. I don't think, like I said, I'm a bit under the weather. I don't want to do a long stream, so I'm gonna start with the forest, and we'll see how we go. I, I prepared four shots to show you i have forest highway street in katana now keep in mind that these are uh, production stuff okay so so it's not it's not going to be pretty <laughs> some of them are very messy um so keep that in mind uh, but this one here the forest which is i'm gonna open now it started kind of like on this awkward shot that we had with some trees this was the first version that we did um which was just like just trees um just a basically a a 3d system inside of nuke that was the first thing we we did and then we kind of like went to a bit more we, we kind of did a lot of versions. Um, I think this is still the tree, and then this is still the tree as well. Might as well just open them with my space bar instead of having to open them like this because it's a bit awkward. So um, let's see here. So that's the first one. We then did the, kind of the same thing. We ended up doing almost the same thing. Then we started putting this white background. Um, 
We then started putting zombies. These zombies were rendered in CG and the animation comes from a Kinect. So one Brockhouse, my CG supervisor at the time, he basically uses Kinect from the Xbox to animate himself to do a couple of zombie moves. Um, we then started doing this pan that was uh, moving sideways. And then I think I think then at some point we started putting color into it. We had this idea at some point that we were going to show uh, the zombies being wiped from the trees, uh, almost by like being shown there. And uh, I think at some yeah, that's when we started putting color. We, there was a phase that we had green, and and then we had a phase that we finally went to reds with some glows. We kind of like abandoned that, uh, and then I think, uh, yeah, there's a quite a, yeah, that's closer to the final one. No fog yet, so I think it only really started looking good when we started putting fog. That's textures on top, more zombies, more fog. They're still floating in the air, though. Uh, more and more fog, more and more textures, and I think I'm reaching the end now. Version 30, more and more fog, more and more textures. And I think at some point we gave up on the wipes and we just have them there all the time, I believe. Uh, and that's the last version. Uh, yeah, last version 33, where they show up like this. That's the last version we did. So that's what I'm going to show you in Nuke. Um, very simple shot, though. Like, very simple but very effective shot. Um, I'll take the opportunity to answer again, Sejel. Thank you so much for putting the questions on Discord for me. Thank you. I can't thank you enough. Um, much appreciated, my friend. Another question I have here, this time from, uh, let's see, uh, Adam asks, Hi, Hugo. I was wondering if you have any tips on working with 4K 16-bit footage to keep your performance high. The biggest tip I can give you for working with 4K footage would be to get the fastest cache drive you can get. So I'm currently using um, a RAID system. I'm using, I can't remember the name of it. I think, I, I think we've talked about this before. Uh, let me just double check here. Um, I'm using, the, the caching is the most important thing really, to be honest. Um, let me just double check what's the, the, the name of it because I can't remember. It's the oh yeah it's I I now I know I know I know I know where is my notes just a second just uh, I'm gonna get my notes and then I can show you that um high point uh, high point uh, there that's the one yeah so the one I'm using is this one um, you don't need to use this one by the way. Uh, there's no need for you to use it. You can use any, really, but um, I use this one, um, you know. Um, this is the one I have on my Mac Pro. So this is a PCI card with eight slots for blades of SSD. It can reach about 14,000 megs a sec, and that's PCI 3. You can get a PCI 4 now. I don't have a PCI 4 uh, motherboard, so it doesn't matter for me. But you can do get, you, there is a new version now in PCI 4. And basically it just allows you to put eight blades. Um, and that's it really. It works on Linux, Windows, Mac. Uh, I'm not being paid by them. Uh, it's, I just use it. Use it. <laughs> you can do eight M2 NVMe SSDs, and like I said, you don't need to put eight. You you can buy one that only has four. There's one that only has two. It doesn't really matter. But this is the fastest way to have cache, uh, so that you can load footage as quick as possible inside of Nuke, uh, because then you can point the cache drive to this and. Um, I am currently running, I don't think I'm optimized at the, at the time because it's pretty full, my cache. But So considering the, the, my cache is very full, so keep that in mind. So the fuller it is, the slower it gets. But at the moment, let's see, a, let's do a quick test here. At the moment I'm doing on my cache, so I have eight terabytes. So I have eight blades of one terabyte each. I'm just going to go and do a quick test here to show you how much I have here. So RAID... Uh, let's see here. I'm running, yeah, it's pretty full right now. So I'm running about 5,000 megs a sec 
writing and 7,000 reading. Usually I, I can get 12, but it's pretty full. I, I think I only have one terabyte left on my cache right now. So I think that's why it's slower. But this is still really fast. Uh, and as you can see, I can run anything from 2K, 4K, 8K, and even 12K at full uh, real time. Uh, there's another one, another test. I think if I do five five gigs, I get a better speed because it's a larger file. Yeah, and I do. If I I did notice that the Azure, the Azure uh, System Light test gives me a more accurate version. So um, I'm just gonna show you this real quick. Uh, let's see here. Zafir is asking me, is there any special reason you're using a Mac Pro? Well, I'm, I'm using a Mac Pro because because I it's just better for what I do. I do a lot of editing, a lot of grading, and the Mac, the Mac uh, environment is just better for playback, video playback, capture, DaVinci, grading. It's just a better overhaul performance, and especially have full support for QuickTime. That's why I use it. My bandwidth with two GPUs and over 300 gigs of RAM, I, I can beat any PC anytime, really, to be honest. Um, so if I go to the Azure performance here, if I go to 8K ProRes 444 and I do a quick test, I can do about, oh, no, that's not wrong, that's the wrong uh, drive, sorry about that. I need to like change it to the RAID system. That was my local drive, uh, RAID, open, yeah, so I'm getting about 8,000 megs right, and about, and this is PCI 3. If I had PCI 4, it would be a lot faster, um, and about 10, 11K read. So playback system for frames per second, I would get 214 frames per second maximum on 8K, and read 286 frames per second. So more than enough to play 60 or even 120 if I wanted to. Um, so that's kind of what I do. Uh, that's what I use. I really recommend you to get most, most for caching most amount of RAM. I'm currently running um, 400, 384 gigs of RAM. So that's the key for playing back. It's the RAM. Um, and I have dual Radeons. So I have in total 64 gigs of VRAM. So the CPU doesn't really matter. It's all about the RAM, the VRAM, and also the caching drive. Um, CPU is not really my priority at all. Uh, but anyway, this this um, this escalated quite quickly, didn't it? <laughs> it went uh, geeky quite quickly. So uh, let's uh, open up Nuke and and talk about that. Um, <laughs> So, uh, let's see here. So, this is the script. So, it's quite large, as you can see, but it's because we have a lot of layers. That's the only reason. It's not as complex. Now, I keep saying this on all the streams. Remember that I am running sRGB here because I don't really have the LUT from the time anymore. I, I can't find it. <laughs> so, we're going to live with sRGB for now. Um, I could have put Rexons on 9, but it's going to... It's not going to really be the same as what I had before. Um, it's close enough, uh, but I'll leave sRGB because I think it's just easier for you guys to see it. It's a, probably a bit easier for you to all see it. Um, okay, so let's uh, let's go through here. Uh, yeah, that's right, Nub. It's pretty much playing four IMAX movies at the same time. Yes, <laughs> um, yes, that that is true. I I have um, I don't you know, Nub. I don't think I've ever dropped a frame on Da Vinci ever. I've edited 4K, 10 bit, 60 frames per second, even edited 8K, and I never lost the frame. So the bandwidth is really good for this cache. Um, so yeah, I think I think um I think I think that's it. Um okay. 
So let's start from the beginning. So we, of course, start with this matte painting. So, well, actually, we start with, with red. That's the first thing we do. Um, and then we steal the sky from this plate. Um, that's the other shot I have also to show you. So basically, we start with red, just pure red. We grade it down so it's a bit darker. And then we have this matte painting. We're reusing the sky from here. So I'm using this texture. Uh, from that matte painting and I'm using this background and these are Photoshop files um, uh, Basically that you can read inside of nuke um, directly uh, They're very slow by the way, so I always would advise you to read them as EXR so you can convert to PSDs and I should have I should have really done that here, but I didn't um, so um, I guess then we have the textures, we merge them together, um, we color correct them a bit, and then we reformat it to the size. We're doing HD, so then we multiply that into the red, and that gives me that kind of first layer background. Um, maybe I, I should show you the breakdown of that shot. That's a good idea. Let me just... <laughs> uh, we got a bit uh, deviated from... Uh, from this thing, so I'll show you the break breakdown of our sh the shot we're doing right now. Um, so that's that shot here. That's the shot. So just a second. Uh, okay. Hello, anybody home? Think McFly. Think. Uh, okay. So that's that shot. It's this one. I should have prepared this before, apologies. Um, but, you know, this wouldn't be a live stream if I was completely prepared. So that's the breakdown. You see red and a lot of trees and zombies in CG. That's pretty much it, really. Um, while we're watching that thing, I have so many questions today. You guys are so chatty today. You're so chatty. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Oh man, I forgot to bring water. <laughs> oh god damn it. Um I do apologize that I'm a bit nasal. Um I already explained that on the beginning that I'm under the weather. So I'm gonna if you don't mind, I'm gonna mute myself so you don't uh, so you don't your ears don't explode, okay? So give me one sec. Apologies for that. I just don't want to sneeze your, <laughs> don't want to sneeze you uh, out. Um, Luke is Luke Van is asking 300 RAM. Isn't that an overkill? It, not really. If I run Nuke Studio and DaVinci and Nuke at the same time, I've reached the point where sometimes I have only 60 gig left. So um, depends on what you're doing, really, and especially if you're doing a simulation. 300 gigs is great. Um, so you'd never, or it's it's always better to have more RAM. Of course, you don't need as much. I think one, 128 is the best. Like one, 128 is like the minimum I think you should have. Um, so that's pretty much it. Uh, okay. Yeah, so we multiplied that file uh, there. And then from there, we also have a bit of a ramp. Um, now... We also have these trees. Now, these trees are coming from a Photoshop file. Um, as you see here, in here, I did the correct thing. So this is a Photoshop file that was um, uh, provided by our matte painting. Uh, oh, sorry, not, not, I don't want that. No, 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 not that. Um, and so you see, I don't have the, oh, oh yeah, okay. The Photoshop matte painting is on acids, yes. Um, yeah, so basically the matte painting was converted um, and that's the one I'm using. And so basically I, I have a ramp here. I did a bit of color correction so I can lower a bit the, the top there. So I want to increase the reds on the bottom and, a, and decrease them on the, on the top, really. That's kind of the, the, the idea here. Um, so let's see here. So And then... Then we start having the trees, uh, both of them here. So that's another set of trees. 
and um, give me just a second. So we have now we have a stream here that goes through multiple sections. So as we keep going here, we have the first thing that oh, disabled it by mistake. First thing that goes in, which is the far away uh, zombies. So that's the first thing that gets into that thing. So that's that. These zombies come from a 3D system. So we basically have these dudes here. So these were like I like I said, I. Uh, one Brockhouse rendered these zombies. These are, I believe that they are stock zombies. I, I think they're stock zombies. Um, I think I think that's what it was. Uh, I don't think it's, um, I don't think they were, yeah, I, ca I can't remember off the top of my head anymore. <laughs> it's been a while. Um, so I can't really remember off the top of my head. But they were animated by a connect. So we basically hooked up a connect and then, one pretended to be a few zombies and then that's the result so we have that dude then we have this dude and these are pretty pretty straightforward we only have a specular pass and we have an utility pass basically so that's quite simple so we started with him multiplied by the utility then color corrected him a bit and then put a bit of specular so we can have more highlights on him and then we over overload the specular so we have a bit more now they're really far away so it doesn't really matter we also have a diffuse raw which we've graded in so we have a bit more um rim light on them and then they get color corrected now we also have a shadow floor for it and that shadow is then merged and we also have some texturing this is like just some painted texturing that we've transformed and graded on top so that um, it would look y you do remember last time when we talked uh, um, you know when we talked last week um, that um, that's right I put the wrong thing here that's the one I should put it uh, remember when we talked two weeks ago um, we have it's we spent a long time trying to reach this kind of paintly look almost like painted and texture then also like um it took us a long time so we got to this idea that that we started using these paint strokes as textures um, um and and then that got merged we then did a bit of color correction a bit more color correction to remove the feet we retimed them a bit now the retime is basically to make them look if you look at the the way they move we cut frames so that we could have them look a bit more jittery so that they would look a bit more like comic book uh, look you know that's why so we have a frame hold here and we have a increments of two so it jumps and we have a retime so it's cut in half the speed so it's a bit more jittery and then we have um, frame hold with increments of two so it basically it jumps instead of being 24 well, actually i think this this project is 30 i think is it 30 or 424 yeah this project is 30 so we ran it at 15 frames per second which is an awkward frame rate but it doesn't really matter and um, then we did a bit of a time offset and then it went into a 3d system so of course we we had the 3d system to localize where the zombies would be and they were placed in individual cards as you can see them here and they were positioned obviously this is now broken up if i if i go um if i go um a bit earlier on my stream on my script there is a version of this script where you have all the 3d system together but of course this is the final version and so we've separated each section uh, one by one because uh, we wanted to have all the zombies uh, separated to control them and then the trees separated obviously if i go all the way to the bottom here and i look at the 3d system you would then see the whole thing you see just loading here so that's the entire 3d system loading you give it a second uh yeah so you see that's like trees trunks floor zombies and whatnot so that's pretty simple uh, not a really complex script, really, to be honest. Pretty simple uh, stuff. Um, so, yeah. And you're right, Nub. Yeah, usually animation is done on twos. Uh, and that's what we did there. Um, 
Studio Dev is, yes, Copycat runs fine on uh, AMD. It does, yeah. So the Foundry has fixed that. Um, I can prove it to you if you want to. So not a lot of people know this. So if you go to any of the Copycat nodes, I'm going to save before it crashes. If you go to any of the Copycat nodes, um, for example, the Deblur, doesn't really matter which one it is. Uh, what did I do now? What have I done? Okay, here we go. So you see the deblur? You see? It's correctly finding my two GPUs. So Foundry not only has made Copycat compatible with uh, M1s, M2s, and M3s on Mac, but they also made it compatible with Intel Macs. So the um, I'm not sure about Windows, but at least on the Mac, the AMD is running, as you can see here. And including the actual copycat node, um, the copycat node itself, you see? Local uh, GPU, two GPUs. So, and if I had, well, it's not. They're lying. <laughs> I don't know why the Foundry on their website doesn't update that. I'm not sure about Windows, though. I know this is a Mac thing that you can run, because remember, the Mac doesn't run CUDA. It runs something called Metal. And so... Metal is compatible with uh, AMD cards and also compatible with M1, M2, and M3. So I think what Foundry done is the Foundry made it compatible with Metal. But Metal doesn't exist on Windows. So I'm, I'm not entirely sure um, you, can, uh, you can run AMDs on Windows. I'm not sure because you wouldn't have Metal. Unless they do OpenGL or do something. I'm not sure, really. Um... But yeah, I can run the... I Basically, since I have two GPUs, 60... So it would be 64 gigs of VRAM in total. I've tested this. It's really fast on Copycat. Really, really fast. So, you know, it's working really well. Um, I use it all the time for, um, for uh, upscaling. Use it all the time for upscaling. I don't even render in 4K anymore. I only render in 2.5K. Everything I do now, I render in 2.5K. And then I upscale um, <laughs> to to 4K. It's just just better. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna delete this because we don't need this. And we're not using this today. Um, yeah, so I'm just showing you this. So that's that's when it's all together. Okay, um, but of course I've split it. So I'm gonna go all the way up here. So these are quite straightforward. We have zombies and these are the same it's always the same we just have different zombies this we have a lady zombie here we have a, a bald zombie here <laughs> let's just play him a little bit so it's quite good what one made he's a quite a good actor i guess um <laughs> so it's um yeah <laughs> and then i think last but not least is this one here that's another dude i'm gonna gamma up a bit we so we can see them and then we have this dude here, the slow walker, this dude here. I like this dude. It's like... <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's, uh, it's enough for the jokes. They're really flickering and noisy, but who cares? They're so tiny. Oh, why is this uh, not correct? Look at that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then it all... I should stop the playback though so it's gonna take forever um okay so then that's the back 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 people they go in like that um you can hardly see them i think you only see them at the end there you go that's the ones and then we have yet another one so i'm using the same ones to do this one i believe so that's is that no sorry that's the first trunks that go in those are the back trees that also are rendered with the same camera as well. Um, and uh, let's see here. So we then grade the top of the of the trees, and then we made them red a bit, and we graded them. And there was a time the trees were gonna stay as they were, as you saw on the on the versions. Um, you know, especially when I go to versions here, you see. For a long, long, long time, we had white trees and normal trees with trunks with regular color. It's a bit later when we when we went to the reds, and then at some point we just said, "Ah, fuck it, we'll just put all the trees 
red as well. And that's kind of what we ended up doing. Um, okay, so then this entire thing goes in here. So we have that. And then the first trees come in and they get kind of merged into the background. That's the whole point. It's just really a stylization thing. And so that goes in there. Um, and then what else here? This is the floor. So the floor is coming from here. So we have a ground uh, which gets shuffled. So we have the foreground ground. And, and I, I must, might as well show you the matte painting. So let's see here. Where is that matte painting? So I'm going to just like open that up. So another finder here. <coughs> Sorry. Apologies, I had to cough there. As I told you in the beginning, I'm a bit under the weather, <clears throat> and my my throat is is very dry. I need some water, but I forgot to bring water. I only have a little bit of green cola. Hmm. Green cola. <laughs> I need to like talk about that later. Um. Okay. Let's just uh, go in here. I need to go to the project itself and let's see here. So that would be Walking Dead Assets 2D Matte Painting Forest. Forest. Where's the forest? Oh my god. Uh, so many things here. Forest. Uh, and then version. I guess I need to put this by date and see what's the last one. That would be that version. Might as well open it. So why am I? In, uh, that? Oh yeah, that's the yeah, that's the that's the concept art. Yeah, so might as well show you this. This is gonna be good. <clears throat> yeah, I I I forgot to bring water. <laughs> I need to go. I need to go and get the water. I forgot to bring it. Um, so I need to like fill up my glass. I, we're almost at the one hour mark, and I'll do a break, and then I'll get some water. Don't worry. Um, but thank you so much for asking and thank you so much for being so kind. Oh my God, Photoshop, every time they update Photoshop, it's uglier. <laughs> the, the splash screen gets uglier and uglier, doesn't it? I'm not sure what, what, what their intent is with that. Um, <laughs> so we talked about this amazing artist, Robin, last time. Don't forget, like I, I, I'm going to shout out him again uh, because he's so good. He is the one that made these amazing matte paintings. Um, let's just, uh, go here. I, I, I'm on the wrong, I'm on the wrong, um, uh, Instagram account. So, uh, <laughs> I just wanted to shout out because he did such a good job. Um, okay. So that's the Photoshop file. I, and I am here and then Robin. Uh, yeah, Robin Flory. Um, Robin Flory, as I said before, great artist. He was the one that did all these map paintings and concept arts. So I'm going to check out his, his uh, Instagram. Really good. He has some really good stuff here. He's currently an artist, I believe, on a... I can't remember the company, but it's a really big company. I can't remember which it is, but he's now a concept artist over there. Um, but yeah, um, check it out. Um, yeah, so... I got from him this kind of version. This was like the intended look at the time when we you know, remember that we talked about having just a white tree. But then, of course, for my comp, I couldn't use this because it, it has the trees cut. So he had to do like a, a taller version. I asked him to do this taller version because this taller version would be easier for me to then... Uh, use inside of Nuke because then I can make the 3D system and then the trees would be quite tall at the back. And so they're all divided and split. And so if I go to Nuke, um, you can kind of see that here. Um, and if I go here uh, into the side, I'm just going to go to the side here. Um, I'm not sure why this is not giving me a key. Uh, why is it not? Oh, okay. Not sure why the post this stamp was off. That's weird. But um, all Photoshop files can come in and there's a button here called Breakout Layers. Now be vertical compositing. So I need to like make it far away from the rest of the script so it has space to do it. So I'm going to do Breakout Box. So that's the layer system of Photoshop being split. 
So we have, you know, every single name on layers in Photoshop would show up here. So if you go through all of this, um, you would get, where is it? That. So that's the same exact Photoshop file that we should have in Photoshop. So that's a replica with the merging. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, so Photoshop is looking like that. I, I did switch off things here, so I need to like switch them on. So let's see if they are similar. Yeah. As you can see, it's a full match. So I have Nuke here and a Photoshop here. So it's always worth you checking if it matches <laughs> because some of the things that might not match is the types of uh, values. And as you can see here, we have mixers and luminosities operations because there's other operations here that don't exist in a merge node. Um, and so keep that in mind that not everything is transferable from Photoshop to Nuke. Sometimes some stuff can't come come across, you know. So some stuff gets lost. Like if you have a, sp a special filter or if you have some kind of weird thing going on on one of the layers, it's not really going to come across. Um, okay, cool. Let's just keep going here. Where were we? We were down here on the floor. Yes, that's right. So the floor comes from that floor. And uh, basically, I think the floor is the result is here. No, that's not the floor. The floor is this one here. Sorry. So that's the floor. A very simple setup. Um, it's just a projection, really. It's the Photoshop file. I know it's really dark, but it's a projection of that texture that uh, Robin did. Um, so basically, we have the floor, another floor, and another floor. And basically, I just use a project node to merge it all together. Uh, was this disconnected? That's weird. Um, hmm. Why? Well, I don't, don't believe it was disconnected. I don't see any difference. I'm not sure why this is disconnected. It's not that it's making any difference. That is weird. Did I disconnect it by mistake? Maybe maybe I did. Uh, it could be. My fat fingers maybe did that. Um, so that's the floor. Basically comes in. Uh, regular color. Remember then at some point the client asked to make it red. So we made it darker, made it red, and vignetted it, and then it kind of gets merged. We had just the floor, and then we had the trees, and then we had the floor, so the floor is now there. Uh, and you see those ramps are basically doing this. You know, they're, they're ramping that section there, and that's the color, and that's the other color, you see, so it doesn't make it red or not. That's pretty much it. Um, and let's see here, so then, from there, we go into the next one, which is this. So we, let's see here. So that's more trees and same setup again, really. A bunch of trees in a 3D system with some cards placed organically. We've, I just art directed them um, so that they look cool. I mean, I, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> that's usually in my case. Um, I just did whatever. <clears throat> um, yeah. And so um, that... Oh, don't worry, Sejal. Thank you so much for your help. I already have so many questions here. I already have way too many questions to answer anyway. So thank you so much for sticking around and, and for helping so much. Uh, much appreciated, my friend. <clears throat> okay. Let's just uh, continue here. So again, trees and then same deal. We... Did a bit of grading on them with using a ramp. So we cut the tops of the trees, color correct them, and grade them to red. Apologies, I'm a bit uh, nasal. Uh, and then that goes in. So you see, that, raid, that grade node is doing this, you see, to make them disappear a bit. And that's the other grade, to make them from black to red. Um, and then it keeps going. Then we have more trees that go in. That's just the first layer. It's always the same setup, as you can see. They come from the from the stream because we have these kind of like... We, we basically have three streams here. I have the matte painting here, which is this one. And then I have another matte painting here, which is this one. So we basically have two matte paintings here. And there are the, this is the mainstream of the comp. And then we have the two other streams, 
which are feeding the 3D systems with these layers from here. So we basically have both of them here, and they're feeding the two 3D systems. That's why we have a main one and then the two matte painting streams all the way to going down. And then next up, we have another more trees and more trees. Um, even more trees. Well, now is the zombies. So we have a big batch of zombies here that are basically coming through here. So we have them all in cards. Again, remember, I had them all together with, with the tree trunks. Um, so when I first set this up, I had them all in one single 3D system. I had to split it up because um, so that I could um, so that I could like control it better in terms of color correction. So um, because you see, if I watch them all together, you see they are all together. So because obviously you want to know where the trees are, because you want to make sure the the zombies don't you know don't get cut by trees that shouldn't be. And of course, I, I could have projected the trees into cylinders. That would have given me a little bit more parallax, but I didn't do that. I, I mean, this was a relatively short project and low budget project. I didn't want to spend too much time on this. So I think I think it worked well even without that. Um, so that's the, the next batch of zombies. And then after that, we have some more trees that come in. That's the middle ground trees, which are blacker. I'm getting progressively blacker as we get closer to camera so that we have more and more depth into the shot. And then we have then, and again, I don't really have to show you this. This comes from the same system, a bunch of trunks in 3D cards. They all get massaged and color corrected, and then they get merged on layers um, and another layer. And then I think that's the last one, the front one. These are the, the really large ones um, in the front. And so if I go here, you see the, these are really close to camera. Um, but because they were doing the wiping. Uh, but again, if I look at it through here, you can see that they are quite close to camera. Um, so, because the camera, well, which one is it? The camera would be, oh, wow, I have it. Oh, it's always camera render. Okay, it's always the same one. So that's the camera view. I'm gonna just lock it. Uh, no, not that, that locked. Um, and that's the, I don't take this play back. I don't, don't believe it plays back, unfortunately. Uh, in 3D, no. Ah. I think I crashed the system now. <laughs> ah, there you go. It's coming. Uh, yeah, this is never going to play back. Um, man, Foundry still has a long way to go with the 3D system. Uh, it's still... I know I'm using the classic one, of course. I'm using Scanline Render because that's what was used at the time. Today, I most likely would use the new 3D system uh, but because um, we have the new Scanline Render. Um, so... Assuming it's going to be faster, uh, I hope it is. Uh, although it's still beta uh, for some reason, it still says beta, so I'm not sure when that's going to leave beta. But um, so I don't like using beta stuff, so I, <laughs> I don't think I would uh, use it if it's not really delivered. Um, okay, so that gets merged. I put a bit of blur so it just gets a bit blurry on the background, um, and then that gets merged in. And that's pretty much it. So we then have some weighted blur just to diffuse a bit this thing and a bit of glow just to like had a little bit of spill between the plates. A bit of grade, a bit of more color correction in grade. Then we have a vignette thing going on. We have a vignette here, another vignette here in the middle. And then some chromatic aberration, just to break up a bit. Again, this is a very stylized render, so it doesn't really need to be realistic. I also put some lens distortion, just because, you know, why not? It just gives you, like, extra distortion. This lens distortion is from an 18 mil, which I hope, do a mistake here, I hope, hopefully it's the same camera. 
18 mil. Uh, actually, it's wrong. It was a 25 mil. I should have brought in a distortion from a 25 mil, but this is a creative thing. So this is a stylized project. So it doesn't really matter that I use an 18. I should have used a 25. Then I have some grain. This is like a plate of grain. It's like, like grain, really. Nothing else more. Um, and then I merge it and even put more grain on top. And then that's it, really. Um, I think I think that's it. I'm going to do a break soon, but I need to get some water. Uh, and that's the final shot um, that we did. Um, I like this shot a lot. It's really simple, really simple setup. Um, but I, I like this shot a lot. Um, okay, while we're waiting for this to cache, I have a couple of more questions. So let's see here. Blah, 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 blah. Um, okay, so. Uh, da, da, da. Okay, performance, I've answered that. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to do a couple of quick replies here. So Paki Zero asks, Hi, I have the opportunity to join the production team for composting artist position using Nuke. I never used Nuke before. I'm in the 3D industry for eight years and I've never used Nuke. What do you suggest for me? Well, I would suggest you to learn Nuke. Um, there is a lot of resources for free on the Foundry's website. Um, you can also check out some of the videos I have in some of the live streams I do here on YouTube. Um, if you want to go deeper, you can always buy my course. It's sixty percent off right now. Um, you know, so so you could you could do that if you want to. Um, I believe, I believe. Uh, let's see here. So where is it? Uh, I think that's the one. Yeah. So let's just open up that here. So if you if you are interested, um, you can always buy my course. That's the link. Uh, but you don't need to buy my course. You can always like um, you can always like get get my you know you just get my free stuff on YouTube. There's a lot of there, um, and also there's a lot of free stuff on Foundry's website, uh, Foundry's YouTube channel as well. So you can do that. That's the link of my course if you want to. Um, but yeah, I, that's what I would suggest you. As a 3D artist, you should know Nuke anyway. It's a really uh, common practice that they know Nuke. Uh, and then I have another question here from Halo VFX. Halo VFX asks, Hugo, probably not the sort of question you're expecting, but as you got a ton of experience in the industry, what, why do you think there aren't any more game cinematics companies based in the UK? Well, the game cinematics industry is quite uh, tricky because a lot of companies do their own cinematics in-house. So if you're interested in doing a lot of cinematics, you might want to consider working in a games company because a lot of games companies have their own departments to do their own cinematics. That happens a lot. And uh, there, it all, there are a lot of games companies in the UK, so you can always look into that. Um, Okay, cool. So I'm going to answer more questions when I come back. Um, I need to get some water. I'm really nasal. I need to go in to the bathroom to remove all this nasally stuff. <laughs> and that's the shot. I hope you enjoyed that. We'll, we'll talk a bit more when we come back, uh, when I open another one. But um, hope you enjoyed that. Let's do a break. As always, we do responsible streaming here. So we have been on, going on for an hour. So we're going to do a break now. Uh, 10 minutes, go and rest your legs, drink some water like I'm doing, uh, rest your eyes for a bit, and then we come back. I'm going to put a timer as I usually do, um, and we'll come back very soon. So I'm um, just going to, almost forgot, I need to put my, my video, <laughs> of course. Um, so yeah, so I hope you come back soon. I hope you consider coming back. We'll do the giveaways when we come back uh, after the rest of the compositing. And uh, I hope we see you all very soon. Um, 10 minutes from now, I'll see you all very soon.
Okay, I am back. Now I have water. <laughs> so I am not going to like get so so um <laughs> so I managed to get some water. I've also like um not so nasal as I was before. Um as I explained in the beginning, I'm a bit under the weather, so apologies for that. Um so yeah. I have a lot of, man, you guys are very talkative today. Like there's so many questions. <laughs> So many questions. Damn. Um, okay. So many. You guys are talking so quickly. What are you guys talking about? Like, there's so many talking about the 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 courses and oh my god. Oh, you guys are talking about other places. Okay. Udini. Okay, Udini. I have no idea where to find Udini stuff. Okay, so uh, we're gonna have the giveaway soon. As I as I explained on the beginning, I'm I'm a bit um, I'm a bit under the weather today, so we're not gonna stick around for too long um, because because I'm I'm not feeling very well today, and so and we do these. The, remember, we do these streams every week, uh, but we alternate. Um, next week we'll have the showroom reviews so if you're interested on getting your showroom review uh will be next week on the 12th of april uh from three again every thursday so next week <clears throat> we'll have the the showroom reviews um and then the week after that we'll come back to nook this constructions um so that's the plan um so yes yeah, so i might do a shorter uh, stream today I I understand that that um, most people are probably expecting more. Um, I did disconstruct an entire shot, um, which was the Walking Dead shot we just talked about, um, and so I hope you've enjoyed that. Uh, that was that shot here that we've talked about, um, but I'm not entirely sure I'm gonna do any more. I think we'll do the break. We'll do the giveaway. And then we are going to be out because, like I said, I'm a, I'm a bit nasal. I'm a bit feeling a bit tired. Uh, I'm not feeling um, completely 100%. So might as well go and rest and that's it. Um, I think in two weeks from now, I really want to go through this shot here. And then I have also this shot here that I want to go through. Um, and then last but not least, I also have this one here as well. There's a couple of ones that I want to do before I jump into the um, the uh, Zeiss project as well. Okay, so I already put the links to the giveaways. We might as well do the giveaways uh, now. I'm going to answer, while I'm waiting for all of you to do the giveaways, I'm going to just like... Let's see here. I'm going to just like put them on the screen here. So that's one. So while I have that on, um, if you want to join in terms of getting a free license. So remember, this 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 um, stream is sponsored by Foundry. And Foundry is giving away a new Kindy license. Um, and so while we're waiting for people to sign up to that, we have that one. And we also have the Nuke the nuke composting course as well as a giveaway we have two giveaways as always and um, while we're waiting for people to sign up to the links that i just posted i'm going to answer some of the questions so because we have a lot of them so let's see here um let's see here uh okay so rojo rojo pihojo asks what tools or software do you use for or recommend uh, for project management. So project management, I cannot recommend enough F-Track from uh, Baselight. From, uh, sorry, not Baselight. Uh, what am I doing? I'll, I'll show it. <laughs> See, I'm a bit tired. F-Track, um, that's the one I use. Uh, and that's from, from Backlight, not Baselight. What I'm talking about, Baselight is another thing. Um, so that's the software I use. So it's called F-Track. Um, it has F-Track Studio, F-Track Review. It's definitely my favorite to organize a visual effects uh, project. So, so if you're asking Ho Ho uh, what tool I would recommend for project management, yeah, I would recommend F-Track. It's by far the best one I've ever used. We used to use them at the mill as well. So it's very good. 
Uh, let's see here, other questions here. So while I'm doing questions, I'm going to keep putting this thing up. Um, let's see here, more questions. Jay Fenton asks, I'm curious who, if anyone, is the is the Yugo of learning about lighting? <laughs> Where did you learn as it seems so complementary, essentially, from compositing? I'm not sure, actually, Fenton. I'm not, I'm not sure where you would learn lighting. I'm sure some people on the chat have an idea of that. Um, but thanks for asking. Uh, Sajel, uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, so Mikael asks, I can help out with 3D. What are you talking about? Oh, you mean... <laughs> Uh, Mikael, are you talking about the 3D for my short? Is that what you mean? Um, I'm not sure. Um, also, Sajal is also saying, let me know I can do 3D in spare time as a co-creator. Uh, oh, thank you so much for, for saying that. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. Uh, very, very kind. Um, I would love to do that, of course. Um, if you guys just contact me and I'll... I'll, uh, I'll uh, yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, contact me separately after the stream, and we'll, we can talk more about it. I would love to. The short film is almost done. It's been a long time going. I did it with my students in 2017. I f funny thing is that I shot it on 2017 with my students, and it was 4K at the time, 4.6K, and everyone thought I was crazy uh, by doing it in 4.6K. And now, having... Having considered that it's not out yet, and it's been seven years now, I'm so happy that I have 4.6K because if I'd done HD, it would have been horrible now. <laughs> so, okay, so more questions. I Zaffer is asking, Zaffer is asking, don't forget to sign up to the, to the giveaways. We're going to do the giveaways soon, and then we're going to wrap up the stream. Again, I, I keep saying, I do apologize that I'm making the stream shorter today, but I am feeling under the weather. I think I have a cold coming. I am nasal. My throat hurts a bit. It's scratchy. So I don't think I can continue. I do apologize that it was a much shorter stream than usual. Do apologize if I've disappointed anyone. Uh, I'm really sorry. Um, okay. But I, I'm just a bit scratchy on my on my um, throat, and I don't think I can continue much longer. I thought I was feeling better, uh, but I'm not. Um, okay, so Zafra is asking, is there a special reason you're using a Mac? Oh, we've went through that already. Uh, Dredgen asks, would you recommend MacBook Pro or Windows laptop for Nuke um, if if you only have a laptop? I would recommend the MacBook, a MacBook Pro. The, the Mac laptops are quite good compared to Windows laptops. They're really fast. They're really quick. Their battery life is really long. The screen is really high quality. So if you're going to do compositing, I would recommend the Mac laptop because um, it's just a better laptop in general, um, especially battery life and especially performance. So I... It's hard, like Windows laptops are really heavy and bulky. They're usually not very powerful. So compared to, unless you want to do gaming, if you want to do gaming, then you shouldn't use a Mac laptop, of course. Uh, you should use a Windows laptop. Um, let's see here. So more questions this time. Uh, hmm. Veronica asks, Veronica asks, hello, Hugo. Not a technical question, but about Nuke. How do start? How do start working if you're a junior compositor? Any advice when a junior in London? Well, I mean, the only advice I can give you is to try to sign up to any kind of junior position in London, either as an intern or as a runner or as a junior. Just sign up to as many dozens and dozens of companies that exist in London. Just go through every single website and sign up to all of them at the same time. Don't do just two or three. Send dozens. There's literally hundreds of companies in UK. So you should just open up your net to as much as you can. Um, okay. I hope that helped, Veronica. I'm trying to do like speed questions today, much quicker. Okay, so I have another question here from Shadagundla Rakesh Kumar. 
is the new course accessible lifetime or any timeline? I answered in the chat. So it's not in limited of course because if i you know i'm assuming that in 10 years from now it's going to be in relevant my nuke course uh, but um it's been up for five years i'm not planning to take it out and anytime soon um it's going to be on live until i have students i still sell courses to this day so i'm still selling them um I, I would assume that it's going to be at least another five years until it goes away. But even if it does go away, if you really want it, you can always contact me. I'm I'm if I'm going to bring if I'm going to bring the platform down and bring the course down, I would of course give an option to people to download the files. You know, I, I would never leave people, um, you know, with a hole on their on their wallet. Of course not. I would always like make sure I make a solution to give away the course um, to the people that bought it. So don't worry. Um, okay. No, Noob has a question. I have a question about how to get a job in the first place. Today, online job searching seems to totally unworkable. They don't respond and don't even even get your application. Yeah, one good way to, would be to maybe go to uh, festivals. Uh, so in London, we're going to have Vertex soon. So if you go to Vertex, I'll be there. So Vertex will be the 19th of April. That's going to be on the Business Design Center in London. It's always good for you to go and do talks. There's always like uh, recruitment booths there. There's people to do networking. So Vertex in London is going to be the, the next one that I'm going to be part of. Uh, and that's like for CG. Um, this is from the 3D World magazine. So we have a lot of speakers here, a lot of portfolio reviewers and a lot of really important people in the industry doing a talk. Uh, really recommend you to go and check Ian Fails' talk. Um, this is going to be a talk uh, with Ian Fails, Jane uh, Patton and Simon Hughes from Union talking about the BAFTA winner, Poor Things. Uh, so I really recommend you checking out this um, particular talk, um, of course. So, and then of course, recruitment as well. There's a lot of it on FMX. So you can go to FMX, FMX in Germany, in Stuttgart. That's from the 23rd to the 22nd of April. They have special prices for students. You can always go and get it there. And FMX um, is by far my favorite festival in the world. Um, I always present. I've been presenting there for seven or eight years. I don't remember anymore. Um, I am myself am doing three talks in here. So if you go to the program, and there's a lot of speakers. But um, if I focus on my speaking, of course, here I am. <laughs> looking like a clown. Um, I have three talks. I'm going to be doing the Foundry Power Education Hour with Victor Paris and Christian. So that's going to be cool. Um, I actually think that there is Simon from Framestore as well on it now. Yeah, there you go. So this is the Foundry Education Power Hour, which will be a play good place for you to do some recruitment. So I'll be there. Victor will be there, uh, and then Kirsten. I think, I think, I remember that um, Simon from Framestore is going to be here, but I guess not anymore. Um, hmm. Okay, well, it doesn't matter. It's going to be the three of us, I guess. Um, so I'll do that talk, and then I'm doing a second talk. This time it will be the Visual Effects Live Notes, VFX Notes Live. So this will be the first time ever that I'm doing the VFX Notes podcast live with an audience. So me and Ian Fails will be doing the VFX Notes podcast at, at FMX with a live audience, and it will be talking with Michael Fink. Michael Fink is an Oscar winner, visual effects supervisor. He's been working in, you know, he worked on War Games, he worked on X-Men 1, X-Men 2, Constantine, The Golden Compass, Trump and Thunder, Avatar, Throne Legacy, Tree of Life, Life of Pi. I mean, this... Michael has such an experience. It's going to be great to do the show with him. So it's going to be Michael, Ian, and myself will be live on an audience doing VFX Notes podcast. And then last but not least, I have my third talk, which will be the State of the Industry panel. I did that last year. So this is like a really uh, honest conversation about the state of the industry. 
Um, and so that will be with Christian Barm, with Kay as well, with me, and also Paolo as well. It's going to be great. I think there's more speakers uh, going to be here. I don't think there will be only us, um, but I think it's still growing. So FMX is great for this because FMX has like these um, uh, areas of recruitment, you know, so you can... Um, you can definitely, um, I think, I think you can, um, yeah, you see, because we have the marketplace and then we have the school campus and we have the recruitment and the recruitment place to answer your question is where most companies are there. Um, <laughs> the mill there, <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> um, and you know, you can then talk to them, show your show reels and tree, see if they have any work, um, Sorry if this was a long uh, question, but um, that, that was it. Um, that would be what I would say in terms of getting a job, Nub, um, uh, online these days. Um, okay. Upscaling with Catri. Yes, Sajal is asking. That is true. Uh, Patch3D asks, Hello, Hugo. Do you talk in your new course about color management? Aces and aces and that stuff. So, uh, Patch... 3D. I do not have color management on my course right now. I am doing those classes. My workshops have that. Um, I have two courses, the regular course and the workshops. The workshops do talk about color management. I've still yet to finish the classes about color management, but I am recording them. They will show up. Um, so they will be there um, at some point, but the workshops already have them. Uh, Diogo Loreto asks, Hi, Hugo. What's your opinion on Apple Studio Display for color correction? All the best. Hope you feel soon sooner. The Apple Studio Display, I've never used it. I don't know. Uh, as you guys know, I use BenQ monitors. I don't know, really. I've uh, never used it. It looks good, though. It's 10-bit, so it looks good. Um, okay, cool. So I think I'm going to gonna do the giveaway. Um, um, someone is asking, will the podcast be live on YouTube? Uh, yes. So the podcast will be recorded at FMX live there with a live audience months later, about six months later, it will show up on YouTube, but it, it will be long later. And, and of course with a live audience, people can ask questions to us you know, as well, which is going to be a new thing we've never done really. Okay. Let's do the giveaway. Um, and don't forget, uh, that if you like let's let's start with the giveaway of my nuke course um and see where we go see how many people signed up and then we're going to go uh, like i said i do apologize that i made the short the stream shorter today but i'm not feeling very well so we have um 70 70 uh, 85 people on the course and 126 people on the nuke uh, license so let's do the course first winners um and draw winners and see who wins this thing let's see here so who is okay so the winner of the nuke course uh the winner of the nuke course is don't forget that i'll uh, I'll be here in two weeks again, um, and um, you can always. And I'll be here next week as well with the show reel reviews. Uh, so the winner is a Christian Werner. Werner, I think Christian. So Christian won. Um, I hope he's here. Uh, that's the winner of the Nuke course. Congratulations, Christian. Are you here? I hope you're here. <clears throat> Are you here? I think I saw you before. I can't remember. I think I saw you before. Uh, let's see here if he's here. Is uh, Christian here? Am I wrong? Did I saw him here? I can't remember. Hmm. Um, hmm. I can't remember really at the top of my head. While we're waiting for Christian to show up, um, I keep saying this, and I know I know I keep repeating myself, but if you do enjoy good food, <laughs> consider uh, buying my wife's book, 
Uh, it's available on all Amazons right now. Here it is. <laughs> Green Recipes for All. You don't need to be vegan or vegetarian uh, to buy the book. It's filled with really good recipes. Um, I can vouch for them because I had I had them all. <laughs> I've eaten them all, and they were all amazing. Um, and so consider that um, uh, if you are interested. While while I'm waiting for for uh, Christian to show up, is Christian here? I don't think he is. Yeah, I don't think he is. He's not here. So I'm gonna roll the dice again. So I'm gonna roll the dice. Um, and see who wins again. Okay, so let's roll the dice because he's not here. Definitely not here. Um, yeah, I know, Studio. Victor, I saw Victor promoting the book as well. It's so kind of Victor. Um, and yeah, don't forget, guys. Like, Victor is, is on YouTube um, every week. Like, every week on the clock there. So um, don't forget to go and check him out because he's doing some amazing stuff on YouTube. Um, I'm going to... Shout out to him as well. Um, he's the, he does that every Tuesdays. Um, so, um, and here he is. So Victor has been doing amazing. Uh, Victor Perez, Node by Node. So go and check out his, his YouTube streams. He does a lot of really advanced compositing uh, streams um, every Tuesday. So if you go to the live tab here, you see that the next one, well, the first, it was the first, it was yesterday, last time. So it's going to be next Tuesday. Then, yeah, and you can see all the old streams that he's made. He's done a lot of them now. He does them every week. So go and check him out. It's amazing the streams that he does. Um, he has a, a, a huge knowledge for everyone. So, um, I mean, keep going, uh, Victor. Keep going. <laughs> okay, so uh, Christian is not here, so I'm going to like um, uh, I'm gonna roll the dice again. So let's see here. So since Christian is not here, I'll roll the dice again. I'm almost losing my voice, so I need to like go. Uh, winner. Ah, the the winner of my nuke course is so if. If they're not here, I'll just like keep going and contact them separately. I hope they're here. So the winner of the my new course is um, Milan Nikolic. Is he here? Milan. Is Milan here? It's you? Okay, cool. <laughs> Excellent. I can see it's you. Congratulations, you've won my nuke course. Oh, I wrote nuke wrong. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's stupid of me. I am uh, my fat fingers and, and all. Um, okay, cool. So you've won. Congratulations, my friend. Uh, I'll be in contact soon. Um, and then you'll get access to the course. Okay, so let's uh, move on to the winner of the uh, nuke indie license. Um, so let's do that. So the Nick Nook Indie license, we have 150 people uh, signed up for it. Let's do the winners here. So draw, winner, draw, winner. Let's see here. So we're just waiting for the winner to be drawn. Uh, the winner of the Nook Indie license is, okay, who's the winner? Oh, it's always so hard, these names to pronounce. Why do you do this to me? <laughs> Why do you do this to me? It's always so hard to pronounce these names. Oh, my God. Why? Why? <laughs> okay, let me see if I can find the name here. Okay, forgive me if I mispronounce the name, okay? So the winner of the nuke of the nuke license for one year is Daniyar Khakmetov. Daniyar Khakmetov. I think that's how I say it. Um, hope he's here. Or I hope they are here. I don't know if it's a he, a she, or not. I don't know. So they. I hope they are here. Um, are they here? So in the meantime... Um, I'll do one last question. Uh, I have a question here from, uh, let's see here, Misericordia. Misericordia asks, hi, 
what do you typically look when you're finding a good monitor for doing VFX? Well, I want to look for something that has, um, at, like it should have 10 bit if possible. Um, and it, it should also have complete uh, manual controls and the possibility of having 100% sRGB, 100% Rexon09, and at least 90% or more of P3. You want to make sure you have the most uh, accuracy on the color space as possible, you know. So, are they here? Um, I don't think they are. Are they here? So, is Daniar here? Daniar is not here, I believe. No, I don't think he's here. Okay. Well, if if they're not here, I'll just roll the dice again. Um, and then last will be last one. So, let's see if... Yeah, I, I don't think they're here. Uh, Daniar is not here. No. Okay, well, I'll roll the dice again. Um, let's see here. So, the winner of the Nuke in the license is so you know the rules you have to be here so uh, if you're not here um i won't do it uh, okay so that will be our okay so we'll do here i think uh yeah okay so the winner of the new kindy license and this will be the last one if he's not here um i'll just contact them separately so winner is who's sarwar i think that's how i say it so usama sarwar umas oh, man why do you do this to me <laughs> these names are so weird <clears throat> Osam, are you here? Are you here? I think that's it for the questions. I don't think I have any other questions. There's one one question here from someone that didn't put their name and just says new member. It says, um, should I invest on RAM or graphic card? That's a hard hard reply. Like I don't know. Graphic card is very important for the playback, but then RAM is very important as well. If you can't have both, maybe split the difference and get them both. Are they here? Is does, is no one interested on on? Um, is no one interested on getting? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess no one wants to get these things. Um, I'm gonna just roll the dice again because people are not here, so. Um, okay, so I will, um, okay, that's fine. So I'll just, uh, I'll just repick the winner. Yeah. A lot of missing winners. So I'll, I'm just going to repick it and see who shows up now. Okay. So I have a new winner now for the Nuke Indie license. Uh, so the Nuke Indie license goes to uh, they already have a crack version <laughs> okay so last chance this the new license now goes to at davis at davis are they here <laughs> They already have a cracked version. That's good. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> oh, man. Is Et here? I guess no one is here. Like, where are they? Where are these people? <laughs> no one is here. <laughs> no one ever shows up. Oh, my God. Oh man, I guess I guess this is not happening either, isn't it? Because otherwise they would have said it already. Uh, this is just like really, really, no one is here. This reminds me of what used to happen at um, at Twitch. I used to have this problem all the time. <laughs> I rolled the dice. Okay, so last call. Okay, um, the winner of the nuke in the is damn you guys are making this difficult aren't you um
Okay, so last call. So I have GS Madu Anta. Are they here? <laughs> this is now the fourth winner <laughs> that I'm doing. Um <laughs> <sighs> that's you okay how do you know I how do I know it's you because <laughs> that's not the same name <laughs> how do I now know it's you <laughs> I'm gonna trust you is it really you because Viper VFX is very different from GS Maduanta is it really you Viper don't lie to me because I'm gonna find out <laughs> okay i'll find out if it's not you i will find out later um i can't really pick from the chat because unfortunately um i don't have a way to pick the chat i only have a way for people that sign up to that thing there is no way in youtube for you to pick something from the chat that doesn't exist that doesn't happen so i i can't i sorry i i don't have a way to do that um sorry um I wish it I could. So, okay. I'll I'll believe I'll I'll believe with Victor uh with v Viper. So, I'm going to leave you to it. Um don't forget that we are going to be going live next week again. Um so we'll be live on YouTube. Uh, show showroom reviews if you are interested next week, Thursday, 11 of April. Um I do apologize that this was a shorter stream. Um, I'm just too tired and I am my, 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 my throat is a bit scratched. And so I'll talk to you later. Uh, I'll see you all next week. I hope you've enjoyed this, even though if it was a bit shorter, thank you so much, everyone. Um, I'll see you all everyone later. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye. Have a great day. Um, and I'll see you all very soon. Take care, everyone. Uh, I'll see you all.